Hey, it's Andrea. So, I have decided to do some videos that are more whiteboard, which I've never really done before. I've always done either like a screen capture or sometimes, sorry, I'm jiggling the table this is on, um, screen capture or uh, just, you know, taking my face and doing some kind of commentary. Now, this is a really awkward setup because I'm in the bus. If you know what the bus is, it's a uh, I think it's late 70s school bus that's been converted kind of badly. Well, it probably was good at that point. That um, we use kind of like as a bunkhouse and uh, just an escape. It's turned into a mini man cave where John and Zane escape to now and then as we put this TV in. But anyway, I've had this whiteboard for a long time and I've never used it. It sat outside. I was going to do like a like an office set up outside and um, I can even show it to you. There's like a, I don't even think it's very tidy, but there's an area out here that's very nice when the weather's nice. You've probably seen some pictures of me um, from the, you know, with the bus as the backdrop. But the point is that um, I don't have any space in my house. There's six of us in a pretty small house and to find even wall space for this was it was it just didn't wasn't gonna happen so I had this set up it was hanging outside uh, with the bet the bus as the backdrop for a while and it got water damage and so then it got tucked in here and nobody ever used it and then uh, if you saw the picture that I um, I'll put it as the as the uh, the thumbnail for this video if you saw that picture that that's what it turned into. It turned into like a kid's drawing board space, which is fine. I probably should have two or three of them and then they could have their own, but it's always a struggle because there's so many people around me who want, they're ever encroaching on the space that we do have or the resources that we have or whatever. Not complaining, just explaining. So what I thought I would do today is do stuff anyway. Because a lot of times people will wait, you know, they might feel like they have to order a new whiteboard in order to get this fixed. Or they might have to get the lighting just so, or they might have to, I mean, not, not everybody's got a bus. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. But um, you kind of just have to use whatever you've got and just get it done anyway. Because actually nobody, the people who matter aren't really going to care too much. Um, and the ones who, who, you know, turn out to be your, your uh, detractors they just don't count. So what I thought I would do is I was watching a, a live stream today of, it's actually a, an event that's happening down in Mexico. Norbert Orlowitz was presenting and I took some screenshots of, it's for titanium members in MOVE. So it's a high level, um, it's a high level event. So they bring really good content because they need to deliver. And Norbert never fails to, um, he just never fails to remind me, if nothing else, of the things that I should be doing. And often, you know, everybody slacks off and it's, you need somebody to kind of remind you of the basics every now and then. So one of the things that I tell people to do that really not very many people do is go through the training that you might, whatever training you've got going on, and then teach what it is that you've learned. It's not plagiarism. It's not anything. In fact, people in this space really prefer that you go ahead and spread the word, share what you've learned. You know, yeah, say that you learned it from them. Norbert taught me this this morning. I already knew some of it. doesn't matter. And um, what happens is everybody wins. So he gets a little notoriety. I get to share, share it forward. And uh, you'll actually get the Andrea version of this, even though I'm reading from his slides. All right, so we've got the whiteboard. I've never done a whiteboard video. And one of the things that he did that I thought was pretty interesting was he's, he has a little quiz that he, he did in the middle of his presentation. His presentation was about two hours long. I'm just going to share the quiz part. There's five, five questions he asked for, to, to kind of score your business on you know the, the health of your business. So the question was, how does your business measure up? That's the quiz, the quiz topic. So number one, he suggested the question to ask. 
Hmm. Let's see if my pen will work. Of course not. Hold on. Let's see if the kids have run them all out. Blue is not happening. Oh, it left on the corner. Let's see. Okay, black is working. So number one, the question is, do you have a business and marketing plan for the next six to 12 months? Marketing and business plan for the next six to 12 months. And what you're gonna do is give yourself one point for each of these items. Uh, number two, uh, are you creating and sharing content at least two to three times per week consistently? So I gotta watch out for my muddled space here. Sharing content two to three times a week. Now, what that content is, it doesn't actually matter as long as you're um, comfortable with it and you're not fighting the, the technology. So it could be, a lot of people, th people think content is blog posts specifically. If you're not a writer, then maybe blog posts isn't it. I am a writer and it's still blog posts isn't it. I'm more of an email. My, my flow happens easiest when I'm writing an, e an email. So that's where I share most of my content. Um, it could be videos, it could be, uh, it could be even uh, if you're doing Instagram, it could be quality stories that go with your pictures. Um, it could be screen capture videos, just how-to stuff, it, it, whatever it is that is what you're comfortable with is what you need to do until something shifts and then you'll do something else. And that's, it's a body of work that ends up happening. It's not the individual pieces that matter as much. It's the being there and being consistent. One of the things that I've always said is that I can out consistent anybody, pretty much. There's people who are more daily consistent than I am, but I've, I have longevity at this point because I just kept going. And that's part of the secret. Okay, so number three. So give yourself a point if you're already sharing content two to three times a week. Could be any combination of that stuff. Um, Sharing just 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 sharing stuff to Facebook like without any commentary it doesn't count and if nobody's noticing then that doesn't count but um, you know things that you actually think about or sharing something that you're that you you've read in a book or anything that keeps people brings value to people and keeps them and has the potential to keep them engaged at first it won't feel like there's a lot of people engaged but that you get consistent with that is the important part. Number three, are you adding a minimum of 10 to 20 leads per day Ten to 20 leads per day? And don't forget if you're not, I'm actually not at this point. Um, sometimes once you get rolling, you can kind of, um, you can kind of, you know, ebb and flow with that stuff. Uh, I need a better plan. I won't, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that to you. Um, and if any of these things are missing, it means that that's an area that you need to consider focusing on next. You don't need to do it all at once, but you can, um, the content leads to the leads. The, the marketing business plan will, will outline how you're going to handle these other parts during the during the time period that it's for. Um, so they all go together. Number four, give your point, self a point if you're getting leads consistently. Are you consistently getting uh, acquiring new customers with your lead offer? So he's he's suggesting five or more customers per week. Now this is going to depend on your price point. So I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about the front end offer, but maybe he's not. Maybe he's talking about the high ticket offer. It really depends on what your goals are and what your, um, 
just what you envision for yourself is anything is possible. So consistent uh, new customers from those leads. So if you're getting leads but no, not getting customers, there's something amiss. It's either your um, interaction with them, your engagement with them, it's your lead source, probably a little bit of both, if nothing else. Uh, really, engagement, until you, unless you have really deep pockets and can let the numbers crunch for you in the big way, like really deep pockets, engagement is really the only way forward. If you're not interested in creating content or um, engaging and uh, becoming sort of a, a problem solver slash go-to person for whatever the topic is, it doesn't matter there's topic, um, you know, it's just as part of, it's part of the thing. You have to, you have to be interested in that idea. And give yourself a point if you're getting customers from your leads. And number five, do you have a tiered product mix with a variety of offers to multiply and, and leverage your front end efforts? So for me, I still have, and this is getting to be kind of an old story at this point, I still have a really small list. And it's mostly because I have not pursued the daily lead, um, the daily lead flow and it's 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 a whole mental game for me and and I, I'll explain it in some other video if you haven't already heard the story but um, number five I, I still have managed to do a six-figure business so don't think that you know if you are lacking in any of these areas you can't still do business <laughs> um, probably the the rapport with the people that you do connect with is the most important part if you're not uh, if you're not getting this this lead stuff and the rapport comes from content which comes from solving you know answering people's questions simplest questions sometimes if you become somebody who is consistently available not necessarily even available but a, a, able to know the answer or or google the answer or know somebody who knows the answer you stand out. Okay, number five, do you have a tiered product mix? And this is about the back end offers that go with, um, that really are necessary for scaling the income side of things. So tiered product mix. Now anyone who's in a high ticket offer um, program has this to one degree or another. Oh, here comes my friend. Zane. Hold on, Zane, I'm doing a video. Morgan. Oh, no, Morgan. Sorry. <laughs> doing a video. They all, we all sound alike anymore. Um, so number five is a tiered product offering. Chances are good that doing this on your own is a stretch, even if you're really good. Um, it's, it's much easier to leverage affiliate offers or um, things that people have already set up with the intention of affiliates being uh, able to leverage and take her out of here. here that's the dog's tail <laughs> um so this this is like super important and here comes john john is number two john i'm making a video thank you <laughs> they think i'm crazy because i'm out here in the bus Never, this is the thing though. I cannot. How long has it been? 10 15 minutes, and I can't escape. There is no escaping this. Somebody always is coming back into my space. <laughs> Morgan, take the dogs into the other yard. He was all the way out right now. Place. Thank you. So, anyway, I'm almost done with you guys, and I can go take care of them. Um, but it's a balancing act, it definitely is a balancing act. Uh, Number five, do you have a tiered product offering? So give yourself one point for that. A lot of people, this is probably the easiest to acquire. And the rest of this, because you can you can buy your way into this. You know, there's, there's people with products who want to partner with you, who have a series of upsells that, you know, they become sort of the cart and the and, and a partner in the um, 
in the marketing to a degree. How, it depends on how you want to position yourself. But um, that's the easiest way to, to begin. I mean, that, that part is easy. It's this other stuff that becomes about really positioning yourself as someone worth buying from, someone who's uh, interesting to be around to a degree, someone who is going to not just take someone's money because that's what you can do. Um, that's the stuff, and it's really these three. You know, this this gets this this plan gets set up. Uh, I actually work in twelve week years. Twelve, what do we call twelve years? It's a it comes from a book by the same title um, with my uh, my mastermind group. But whatever it is, the the plan that you set out, um, the things that you're going to be repeating, you're going to be repeating content, repeating attracting an audience, and then selling. That's that's kind of the whole story. So this is the this is the puzzle to figure out, and who you want to be, and how you want to be in that process is the part that confounds us and challenges us most days. I hope that is interesting and I'm looking at my board for the first moment. I see you can't see the whole thing. Um, uh, let's see how that goes. Maybe we'll do some more of these. Let me know. Bye!